Miss Ashworth, I need to ask you something. Can I come in? I'm in the bath. Is it something important? Yes, very important. The fate of the world depends on it. You can come in, if you promise you're not a lesbian. A lesbian? I told you I had a boyfriend, Miss A. Both girls shouldn't get embarrassed of each other. Where do you get ideas like that? I don't know. It seems everyone is gay these days. Now, that's okay with me. Don't get me wrong. But I don't necessarily want a lesbian to stare at my boobs, if you know what I mean. Miss A, if I want to stare at some boobs, I'll take my top off and look in the mirror. Right. Come in then. Cooking up some pancakes. What do you like on yours? We've got strawberry jam, maple syrup, and chocolate spread. Oh, nice. I like pancakes. I'll have one of each. Oh no, you'll have two of each. I made so many that'd be enough for an army. I don't really eat much. That's because you haven't tried my pancakes yet. And if you don't leave me alone now, I never will. Really? Why? I can smell something funny. I think your pancakes are burning. I'm so full up. Where did you learn to cook like that? My dad taught me. He was the king of pancakes. I'll wash up, if you like. I can do that. I like washing up. You do? Really? Really, I'm a good girl. And this is my treat for you, after all. Looks like we got the rain back. I almost felt like something was missing. Do you think it will ever stop? I mean, what if it doesn't? Then it will rain for a million years. I'm not sure I get it. What's the point of that? What did you say it was called again? For the third time. Social network. Why is it so difficult to remember? I just find the whole idea really stupid. Why would I want to tell people that I'm having a shit day? So maybe you would feel better for sharing it with your friends. But I don't have any friends. No, you wouldn't with this attitude. You, on the other hand, seem to have 274 of them. How is that even possible? Well, what can I say? I'm very likable. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, they come every time you play the piano? Yeah, I don't... I don't really play that often. Mostly when I feel really sad. Maybe I actually play more often than I thought. You saddo. I know a song written just for you. Remind me to play it to you sometimes. It'll cheer you up. It's called, All Flowers in Time Bend Towards the Sun. Flowers, yeah. Of course they do. Do you know it? It's written by Jeff Buckley. He would have been bigger than Cobain, you know. I never heard of him. No, he probably didn't. He drowned in Mississippi when he was only young. I've created a profile for you. Maybe now you'll learn how to use it. 
What am I going to do with it? Just look for people you know. Invite them, talk to them. It's a good way to keep in touch. Maybe you could refresh some old friendships? I don't know. I can't think of any names. I probably never really cared enough about anybody. How about people you went to school with? Your old colleagues from work? Nope. Friends. Zero. At least they're right about one thing. I'll add you later. That'll be a start. I made us some coffee. Made us some coffee. Sit down and talk to me for a moment. I'm having a bad day. Could do with some company. Sure. Coffee sounds great. What's wrong, Mitzi? Well, I'm not sure how to get started with this thing. I've been thinking about it the last few days and I just don't seem to get any good ideas. Maybe I've been a fool all along, deluding myself that I could find where that sick bastard is hiding. Maybe I can help you. I have lots of free time, you know? Last night, I made this, well, map. I made a map. This is our building, all four floors. There are two flats on each floor. You really want to help me? That's so great, Miss A. How will I ever pay you back for this? I'll think about it later. But we haven't found him yet, have we? No, but I feel that together we stand a chance. So, let's talk about it. What do we know already? I know that rude, bald guy lives in flat six. I told you about him, didn't I? I think so. It's that guy who came complaining about the noise, right? Right. That's Brian Palmer. Let's mark him on the map. What else do you know about him? Not much. Wait. I remember some woman lived there with him. I've not seen her for ages. They must have split up. Could he be our potential suspect? Yeah, I suppose so. I think so. Okay. Let's take a closer look at him then. I'm pretty sure one of the flats is empty. Hmm. Which one? I think it's the one on the first floor. There's an odd married couple that lives next door. Yeah? What do you know about them? Well, the man is called Joe Davis. He seems nice. Quiet type. But I heard him shouting a couple of times, and he sounded almost like a different person. Like a madman, you know? I gather they must have some serious relationship problems, and they're trying to sort them out behind closed doors. It's impossible to hide this personal dirt from your neighbours. I know it's none of my business, but I can't just plug my ears and pretend I don't hear what's going on there. And the wife? Ivy Davis. Or... Is it Sophie? I can't remember now. Anyway, she's very polite. Always says hello when we pass by each other in the hall. She's one of those size double zero ladies. So skinny you could easily take her for a coat bag. A walking skeleton. I bet she only eats a leaf of lettuce a day. Or nothing at all. She looks quite ill, actually. 
Anything else? They used to have a cat, Lucifer. I often wonder what happened to the poor little chap. We can cross off our flat, of course. Yep, good. That leaves us with only seven flats. Also, there's an old man in flat five, right opposite the Brian's place. There are strange noises coming from flats and from flat seven. Interesting. What kind of noises? Like screaming, explosions, guns. Then there are threats and insults shouted very loudly at someone. Hmm. I think I might know what's going on there. But it's worth checking anyway. Do you know the person who lives in that flat? No, I don't. It's the top floor. I have no business going up there. All I know is what I overheard from neighbors' gossips. Sometimes I hear a dog barking on floor one. First floor? Well, you said one of the flats was empty. Yes, which means the owner of the other flat keeps a dog. I hate dogs. <laughs> Tell me about it. Noisy, smelly creatures. Can you imagine the eye of Adam being a dog lover? Can't see why not. In that case, it might be worth looking into. There's a woman with a baby living upstairs. No husband? I'm not sure. I hardly ever see her. When I do, it's usually in the hall. When she's pushing a pram with a baby inside, she always has tons of shopping hanging from it. I nearly asked her once if she needed help to carry it upstairs. And? I hesitated for a moment, and by the time I offered, she grabbed the baby and the shopping bags and marched off upstairs. Okay, I think that's all that we know at the moment. a pram. This reminds me, I found an old baby pram in my bedroom among all the stuff. Do you have kids, Miss Ashworth? You never talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Come on, Miss A, it's all right. You can talk to me about it. I can tell there's some dark secret you've been keeping to yourself for a long time. You might feel so much better if you share it with someone. You don't want to know about my problems. I just really want us to be friends. I swear to God I could do with one. I'm not very good at friendships. I thought that was rather obvious. Friends should trust each other, you know. I told you about Jack and everything else. Why can't you just do the same? You told me about Jack because you wanted to. I didn't force you, did I? My private stuff is nobody else's business. Why does everyone want to remind me of this all of a sudden? Isn't ten terrible years of suffering enough to let go and never bring it up again? Even... Even for me? Miss Ashworth, I, I'm so sorry. Your mug, it was an accident. You know, just leave it. I don't even care anymore.
Who is it? Hang on a second. Flowers. What... what's that in your other hand? Go away. Leave me alone.
What have I won? Where are you, my dear? Oh no, it's dead. Oh no, what's this? Not a single sound reaches my ears. Goodbye, other world. Is that you behind my back, Mitzi? Miss Ashworth, I thought... I thought you were dead. I saw that man hit you right in the head. Me? Dead? No. No, I'm a tough old girl. You can't kill me that easily. Stop asking stupid questions. We have no time for that. Let's calm down, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. What's this? Duct tape? Yeah, he had loads of that stuff. Maybe we can break this tape if we pull really hard? It won't hurt to try. It's pointless. We're completely wrapped in this damn tape. We're cocoons. Stuck in a web, waiting to be eaten. But where's the spider? He's gonna play with us first, isn't he? Pull yourself together and stop talking shit. I can't think properly. Did he hurt you? That bastard packs a hell of a punch. I've got a bit of a headache, but I think I'm alright. What about you, Mrs. A? Me? Fresh as a daisy. But I'll feel better after we've dealt with this unpleasant guest of ours. Do you think he's going to... rape us? No, he is not. Don't worry, I'll figure something out. Let's just wait for him to come back. Sooner or later they always make a mistake. Miss A? I'm sorry I had upset you. I shouldn't have pushed you so hard. And I'm sorry about the mug, too. It's all right. Water under the bridge. How about those lockpicks that you always carry with you? You know, the ones you got from your dad and used to break into this place? But we aren't locked in a room, are we? We're wrapped in duct tape, in case you forgot. How is a lockpick going to help here? I don't know. It's probably sharp. You could use it to cut this tape. Well, even if that was the case, I can't reach it anyway. So let's forget the lockpicks and think of something else, all right? Let's use this sharp knife to cut the tape then, shall we? What? You've got a knife? Yeah, but I'm sorry. I just remembered I can't reach it. So let's forget the knife and think of something else, yeah? Oh, you are a nasty piece of work, Miss A. I really believed you had a knife. 
You shouldn't joke about it, you know. It's cruel. It wasn't a joke. I lied to you. And you lied about the lockpicks, didn't you? You don't really have them. Who are you to call me a liar? I can't reach the damn lockpicks. It's the truth. Really? Yes, but clearly my word isn't enough. You know what? I'll show you when this is over. If we're not chopped into little pieces, packed in plastic shopping bags and dumped in the trash, that is. Maybe it won't come to that. He might just throw our bodies in the river, or bury them in the woods. Maybe there won't be any shopping. Always an optimist. So, any ideas? Not that many, really. None at all, actually. I'm sorry. And you? What do you think we should do? We should kill the fucker. With what? We're tied up. Are you going to headbutt him to death? I will, if there's no other way. Come on, there's got to be something more sensible we can do. I'm not gonna die here. Not like this. Maybe together we can pull this pipe off the wall? How is that exactly going to help us? Stop asking stupid questions and pull with me. Great, that's just what we needed. A cold shower. I used to like flowers, you know. Like everyone else. Or even more. There was this guy. I should have told him from the start I wasn't interested. But I didn't. Maybe I was interested. In a way, probably. Flattered would be a better word. It was ten years ago. I can hardly even remember him now. He did that thing every week. Because he knew Eric was at work, and I was in the flat, alone. So, every Friday night, I'd get flowers delivered by a courier. Who's Eric? Your partner? My husband. He was a taxi driver. Worked every weekend and I was still on maternity leave. Zoe, our little daughter, was only six months old at the time. Well, five months and twenty-eight days exactly. She would be eleven now. Anyway, that one Friday evening's courier had delivered a big bouquet of the most beautiful lilies. Usually, I would have thrown them away, but I really liked them, somehow. They were extraordinary, absolutely stunning, and looked very expensive. I stood there looking at them, mesmerized. I didn't even hear the phone ring at first, but then I heard it loud and clear, as if I'd woken up from a strange dream, and I knew it was him calling. 